right, uh, Ms. Hale. Yes. Um, your cases are not set until eleven o'clock this morning, so okay. I didn't want you to wait, be waiting all morning. Um, if you want, to, I can put you in the waiting room, or you can log out and log back in closer to eleven if you want. If there's you know something you need to to be doing this morning instead of waiting on this, so um, I just wanted to let you know that. Okay. All righty. Thank you. Okay. Uh -huh. Today on our status hearing, we are conducting this through Zoom under finding of good cause and consent and agreement of parties. We are also live streaming. Ms. Taylor's making our record. All right, we'll take announcements. Daniel Trial for the Texas Department of Family and Protective Services. Tori Cook is my pharmacy specialist. We're present ready on. Stacey Zavala on behalf of Jacob, here and ready. Okay, and neither a parent is present this morning, neither is in my waiting room. Um, we'll get an update, but I did read that, that Mr. Alvarez is requesting genetic testing. So that's for sure will be part of our order today. All right, so what do we have new since the court report was filed? Um, not too much new. Jacob, I mean, he's doing amazing, um, super easy baby, just sleeps most of the time and only cries if he has something going on, needs his diaper change or he's hungry. So he's doing really well. Um, mom has been setting up services. She has set up her counseling. Um, Osar is getting in contact with her. I believe she set up her um, RBT as well. Um, not anything on parenting yet, but she is getting things um, set up. And then dad haven't really been in too much of contact with him. Um, he states he works a lot. So, um, and then he did want genetic testing um, before he signs the service plan. But that is all I got on updates. All right. And again, have both parents been given the paperwork to fill out to request court appointed attorneys? They have been given the paperwork. Um, I'll follow up with them again on if they've got it turned in or not. <clears throat> okay. We haven't seen anything yet. So I just, you know, like it would certainly be beneficial to them. But <clears throat> all right. Um, Tori, Tori, did you send the link to both parents for this hearing? Um, I did not send it to Hector because I hadn't heard back from him. I actually did receive it. Nope. All right. Ms. Zavala? Um, Jacob is placed in a foster family with his um, biological sister, uh, doing great. It's a great placement. I've got no concerns about him there. Um, and it is my recommendation that that continue. All right, then. Uh, is it the position of St. Francis that it would be a continuing danger to return the child home today? Yes, ma'am. And the department is using efforts and making efforts to assist parents in uh, realizing reunification? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. And your honor, mom has signed the service plans. Uh, she signed those on November 21st and they were filed on November 27th. I believe Ms. Cook did state that until genetic testing comes back, the dad did not want to sign service plan yet. Right. But that's been offered to him, so yes, okay. <laughs> All right, then um, I will, as I stated earlier, order the genetic testing uh, between Mr. Alvarez and the child. Um, I will order the service plans as an order of the court and find that there is an, a continuing and ongoing danger to return the children home, to return the child home at this point in time, uh, that the department is using reasonable efforts to achieve reunification of the family. Uh, and our next hearing date is April 2nd day for our status 2024. Hearing. We're conducting this through Zoom under a finding of good cause and agreement of the parties. Uh, we are also live streaming, and Ms. Taylor is making our record this morning. Okay, we'll take announcements. Daniel Trout for the Texas Department of Family and Protective Services. Nerdy and Grani is my pharmacy specialist, and we are present ready. And our on behalf of the father, we're both present and ready. Natalie Archer, on behalf of Daniel Jones, um, I do not know my client's whereabouts at the moment, but I am here, present, ready. Stacy Zabala, on behalf of the child. Thank you. Um, all right, Ms. Montgomery, if you will give us an update, that would be great. Uh, yes, ma'am, the updates. Um, 
for the mom, Daniel Jones, I actually spoke to her this morning. Um, she was with um, Mr. Leonardo Martinez, uh, and she uh, got arrested actually November 17, and then November 18, um, me and a past, um, past support worker, Lindsay, uh, we took her to rehab at the Senecor, um, and then on November 27, uh, she left, again, medical and professional advice. Um, and then uh, I did not know where she's at right now. I uh, tried to talk to her to appear in court, but she did not give me uh, any answer. And about the dad, uh, he's actually being good uh, by completing the RBT class and submitted the certif certificate of completion. Um, and drug screen has been completed with hair follicle and urine tests. Uh, the results still positive with cocaine and fentanyl. Um, and I think about the baby. The baby has been discharged from the hospital on December 2nd. And now his uh, placement at Kinship uh, with Brenna and Rich Jones. Uh, still doing half of a Conidin patch. Um, and baby is doing good. And that's all I have for now. So you said when you spoke with uh, mom this morning and, yes, was, and you said she was with Mr. Martinez. Yes, ma'am. Right. Mr. Martinez, is she present with you right now? No, ma'am. She wanted to get dropped off at the Walmart on Grand. She told me she didn't want to show up to court. Okay. All right. I'm just going to make sure if she was there. Yes, sir. And, and judge, okay. just for the court, um, dad has signed his service plans back in end of October, it looks like, and they were filed in November. Okay. And mom's flat plans have been filed because she hasn't signed up. So I'm going to get contact with her. All right, then, uh, Ms. Angrani, do you believe that uh, it would be a continued danger for the child to return home at this time? Yes, ma'am. Yes, Your Honor. The father's drug tests, are those the first screens that we've gotten on him? Yes. Okay, so we're, we're both hair and UA positive? Yes, yes, sure. Okay. okay. Uh, could I ask Mr. Martinez if he knows if my client's cell phone is the same as it was at the beginning of this case? Um, I'm not too sure. She had texted me on Messenger. Facebook Messenger? Yes, ma'am. Okay, Um, could you... Could you ask her to give me a call? Yes, ma'am. I'll, I'll, let, I'll let her know right now. Okay. Thank you. I've sent her a letter as well, but I don't know if she's received them. So you might ask her that. Thank you. That's that's all, Judge. I, I don't know what to say. I don't really have an update. All right, so just ask her if she can call you and if she, if she got the letter? Yes, please. Okay. Where did it get mailed to? Do you know? I'll have to look it up, but when she, if she calls me, I'll verify her address and talk to her about it. Yes, ma'am. Okay. okay, Ms. Naranjo? Thank you, Your Honor. <clears throat> Ms. Angrani, uh, Mr. Martinez was not able to visit the baby in the NICU because the hospital was denying visits, correct? Yes, ma'am. So it was not any fault of Mr. Martinez that he was not able to see the baby while, while the baby was in the NICU. That's what I've been trying to, to um, talk to the hospital. And then also Mr. Martinez wanted to visit the baby, but it wasn't allowed by the hospital. Yes. I'll pass the witness. And other than that, Your Honor, Mr. Martinez is in agreement to working services. Do we know why they were not allowing the visits? I spoke to one doctor and the doctor says, we don't want so many germs. That's what the doctor says. So uh, especially when uh, Mr. Martinez hasn't shown the positive a drug screen, a uh, negative drug screen. So they did not want to let anybody with um, positive drug screen to come and visit the baby. Okay, so physicians call. All right. Uh, okay. Is the child still in the NICU? No, the child has been discharged um, December 2nd and now uh, he's in the placement uh, with uh, and an uncle, Brenna and Richard Jones. Uh, Ms. Zavala? 
Um, Your Honor, the child has been discharged from the NICU, um, however, is still um, using a clonidine patch. Um, there, there was some pretty significant withdrawal, um, and um, I, I, I believe that it would not be in the baby's best interest to be um, to have in-person visits with someone who is still currently testing positive for fentanyl. Um, I'm, I'm really concerned about that, um, and I would ask that there be a a clean UA before there's any in-person visits because we're looking at um, baby was born I believe September 28th I may have the date wrong but it you know had to be on methadone had to go through a long withdrawal process and we don't need to re-expose him. I think at the temporary order I had ordered that there would be no visits until we had negative UAs with the exception that I was going to allow them to visit at the NICU with gowned, masked, gloved, but since Charles is discharged, then that same order will remain in effect. We're not going to have any, any in-person visits until we've got clean UAs. It's just too it's just too much of a danger to the baby. We can if we can arrange for a FaceTime so that parents can see the child, you know, that's fine. I don't have a problem with that. Um, but you know it's just too much of a health risk, particularly for this child. I mean, it is for all children, but particularly one that's been through what what this one has been through. Uh, so, Ms. Martinez, let me talk to you about your services. I'm pleased to hear that you're getting started on these things. Um, so I'm going to make those service plans in order of the court today. And what yes. that means is it's like any court order. I expect you to abide by it. And Failure to work your services can mean the child doesn't go home. And worst case, it can mean termination of your parental rights. So, you know, okay. nobody wants that to happen. That's not the outcome we want here. The outcome we want is that you and the mother, you know, get drug free. Yes, ma'am. Stabilized and that you can be good, good parents to this baby and, and be, be safe and provide a safe environment for him. So um, I think you'll find if you'll work with us, we're going to work with you. And yeah. um, I do plan on going to rehab. I okay. already talked to Nurti about it. And I talked to my job about it, too. They just want me to let them know when I can get started on that so they can put a leave of absence for me. Okay. All right. I'm glad to hear that you've got that availability through your work. Take advantage of it. Yes, ma'am. Yes, um, Your Honor. So, um, you know, I, I wish you the best of luck. And the sooner you do that, the better, you know, the results will be. So, yes. uh, okay, then um, today I'm going to find that uh, the department will remain as temporary managing conservator. I will continue the child's current placement. Uh, I'm going to order the service plans as an order of the court. I will find that there's a continuing and ongoing danger to the child to be returned home at this point in time and that the department's using reasonable efforts to reunify the family. Okay, our next hearing will be April 2nd of 2024, and that'll be on a nine o'clock docket. All right, thank you, sir. Good luck to you. Yes, ma'am, thank you. On an initial you, permanency hearing. Thank you. Have a good day. We are conducting this through Zoom under a finding of good cause and agreement of the parties. We are live streaming, and Ms. Taylor's making our record. All right, we'll go ahead and take announcements. Daniel Trout for the Texas Department of Family and Protective Services. Nicole Brooks is my permanency specialist. We're present, ready, on. Cindy Hammond for Miss Denton, the mother of Isabella. We're ready to go, Judge. Lorraine Lucero, on behalf of the father, Christopher Roop, Your Honor, um, I uh, did send him the link. I spoke with him yesterday. I thought he was going to try to be here today, but I don't know work-wise if he will be here. But if you could keep a lookout for him, I'd appreciate it. Well, Stacy Zavala, on behalf of Isabella. All right, then. Um, Ms. Brooks, if you'll give us an update since the court report was filed, I'd appreciate it. And, Your Honor, real, real quick before Ms. Brooks start, I, I'm assuming the court has seen it, but the Paternity test came back in October. It was filed with the court on October 4th that Christopher Root is the father of, or is not ruled out as the father of Isabella.
Sorry, Miss Brooks. You no, you're good. I just don't know if I could speak yet. <laughs> yeah, no, you're good. <laughs> um, so since I filed the court report, uh, Isabella did have a um, brain scan on November 20th. Um, that came back showing there were no cysts on her brain, which is complete opposite of what the ultrasound showed. Um, foster mom is taking every precaution with this. And when she goes back to the doctor this month, they're going to make sure they question that a little more to make sure we don't need to do another scan on her head. Um, to rule out any of that. Um, she does have quite a few upcoming appointments um, just to do with all her medical that I talked about in my court report. Um, Misty completed her psychological Monday. Um, I have not received results from that yet, but that I should get them this week. Her and Christopher both went and drug screened last Thursday on the 30th. Um, I have not received those back yet either, and I'll get those filed as soon as I do. Um, I talked to Christopher on the 30th too in person at our office, and he said he was going to have a meeting yesterday to get the rest of his services set up. Um, he had to do an intake with some of them so that he could get those set up. Okay. So is it your position that parents are complying with their service plans and, and actively engaged in working their services? They are. Um, Misty has gone above and beyond and completed almost all her services. Um, we're just struggling with being able to show that she can provide for Isabella um, and can have a stable housing right now. She's living with Christopher's mother. And I know from talking to her, that's not a long term housing place for her. So. Okay. All right. We are just at the initial permanency hearing, so we've still got time to get those things accomplished. Um, Ms. Smith, sounds like you're doing great. Just keep up the good work. And, and um, you know, we'll keep working with you and try to make all this have a very good outcome. <clears throat> is the child placed, it, the child's placed out of this area, is, isn't that right? Yes. Far. Well, not, not far, in region. In region, okay. And so there's in-person visits. All right. What about mom attending medical appointments or mom and dad both for that matter? I mean, did, Misty did go to the brain scan on the 20th. Um, she's more than welcome to go to the other ones too. We'll just have to get someone to go as well. Um, dad lives out of state, so I don't know how feasible that is for him, but he's more than welcome to as well. He's in Colorado, right? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Well, either or both parents, um, you know, I would love to see attend these medical appointments. You know, if, if, uh, Isabella comes home, then, you know, uh, they're the ones that are going to be dealing with all this. So I think the more knowledge they have up front, the better. <clears throat> and we have, we've upped their visits to two hours as well, instead of the hour a week. Okay. Um, Mr. Hammonds. Ms. Brooks, uh, have you received reports regarding the visits with Isabella between her and Misty? I have, sir, and I'm working on getting those put together to send to Misty today. I mean, do those appear to be going well? Um, They do. She, Misty moves around quite a bit and Isabella doesn't like to be jostled. Um, so we're having ECI come in at least once a month and working with them so that they can teach her how to properly handle Isabella with all her medical conditions from her scoliosis to her collarbone has now healed, but it still kind of bothers her at times, I believe. Um, and so we're working with her on that and like how to properly feed her because she does have a, a tongue tie, lip tie. And so they're helping her with that as well. Main thing that Misty needs to focus on is getting some housing stability as well as transportation, correct? Yes, and um, to show her income, I know her payee has been switched quite a bit. Um, she is on disability. Uh, as of yesterday, I found out she is now her own payee. Um, so as soon as I can get proof of income, um, that should be covered. Could you envision a situation between now and the next hearing, like let's say midway before the next hearing, even possibly increase in Misty's visitation to even maybe letting her have Isabella unsupervised for like four hours on a Saturday or something like that? Um, right now, willingly, I, I can't say that. Um, I think she still has a lot to work on um, herself. Okay. I have nothing further, Judge.
All right, and Ms. Lucero? Uh, yes, uh, Ms. Brooks, um, is it, I know that uh, Christopher's living out of state, but is it possible for him um, to maybe take some, well, some of these services to do them online, but through like Texas? Um, he advised me that he's been struggling financially, you know, since he's out of state, he has to, you know, cover his own expenses, you know, for the services. Could he do, are any of his services available online to where the department or St. Francis can cover those costs or? Or no, I can look into it. I know he is currently taking his parenting online. Um, yes. I also spoke with him in October and told him if he got on Medicaid after speaking with CPS in Colorado, that all the services in that area would be covered. Okay, well, I spoke with him yesterday, and I know you spoke to him prior to that, but he advised that um, he didn't qualify for the Medicaid. So mm -hmm. I just advised him to reach out to you to see if it's possible for him to do some online classes. Um, and also, I also advised him if he comes into town, you know, every couple of weeks, possibly y'all could set up, you know, some kind of services while he's here. So yes, ma I can look into that. OK. All right, then. And uh, so he has been in contact with you, though. Is that correct? Yes, ma'am. OK. I'll pass the witness. All right. And Ms. Vaughn. Um, Ms. Bricks, Misty's working hard on her services, correct? Yes, ma'am. And she loves her daughter. Yes. But would you agree that visits, that, that really she's struggling in visits? She is. Um, that's why we started bringing ESAN to try and help with that. Okay. So at this point, she's having some trouble with some basics like changing diapers? Uh, I read that in one of the reports, yes. And I know feeding is a big one too. Um, she gets frustrated very easy that she's not sucking the way she's supposed to be. Okay. So we're having trouble with changing diapers, with feeding, um, and is it correct that Isabella's pretty unhappy the entire visit? Um, from the report, she's cried almost every visit. I know I witnessed one where the person watching the visit and I actually had to calm Isabella down and lay her down and let her just rest for a little bit. Um, she does not like to be jostled around a whole bunch and Misty does move her around quite a bunch. Okay. So Misty's trying hard. She's working on what she needs to, but we really need to focus on, on, getting that visit to go better, to have that connection and, and for Misty to feel confident in her mothering skills. Yes. Okay. So in doing that, um, ECI, as you've mentioned, has started to come in. So, so the last visit, I think it was the second two hour visit. Is mm -hmm. that correct? Yeah. Uh, ECI, yes. ECI was there for at least half of that. Yes. Okay. Um, and they, they worked with mom on some things to work with, with Isabella. Yes. Um, but from their reports, does it also show that they've got some concerns about redirection? It does. Um, and we're in the works of trying to come up with a solution for that to see what else we can do to help with those visits. Okay. Um, Isabella, am I correct? She, she also either does feeding therapy or is going to start feeding therapy. I think she's already doing it. She does feeding therapy once a month um, and occupational therapy twice a month. And then they also have another specialist come in once a month just to go over everything she's doing in occupational and uh, feeding therapy. Okay. Um, is there any way that we can work with those providers and have them kind of do the same thing that ECI is doing? Come in, work with mom there in the visit um, so that they can be helping her on what she needs to do. Uh, yes, so all of that does fall under ECI. So they're just having the one specialist come in, from my understanding, um, since that was the first one we'd only did. But I can definitely get in touch and maybe we can get each specialist to come in at a different time. Um, would it be possible for you to forward over the visitation notes to me um, so far and then also going forward as they happen? Yes, ma'am. Do you want hers and Christopher's or just Misty's? Um, both would be great. So, so at this point, the thought is continue with the two-hour visits, have ECI come in once a month. Right now, we just said once a month. Um, if we need to up that, we can. Um, I just know with their schedule, that was what was feasible as right now was once a month. Okay. And I know we're limited to the, their schedule, but if, if Isabella needs those services and mom needs to figure out how to help Isabella with those services, I sure would like to see them be a part of that together. Um, yes so that we can make sure mom's getting any and all information she needs. Um, would you agree that outside of visits, um, Isabella is a pretty happy baby? Yes, she smiles and laughs and coos and can watch people all the time. So the behavior at the visit is very different from her normal demeanor. Yes, ma'am. I pass witness.
Right. Uh, anybody have anything further? Oh, no, just judgment. one quick thing, Your Honor. I know Miss Lucero brought up the issue with the providers and stuff in Colorado for dad. Um, let Miss Brooks know, supervisor messaged me. We are able to contract with them if um, you can get their names. Their dad has their names and has everything set up. We may be able to contract with those providers for Colorado. I appreciate that. I'll let him know. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Your, Your Honor, I have a couple more questions for Ms. Brooks. Sure. Uh, Ms. Brooks, uh, paternal grandmother, there was a home study done on paternal grandmother, but that was denied. Is that right? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And uh, would you agree with me that the that the main concern um, is uh, maybe folks that were living in the home with, with the grandmother? Uh, yes. Okay. Um, would, if, if, if it wasn't, let's say that some of those folks you uh, moved out and it was just her there in the home, uh, things like that, would that alleviate a lot of the concerns of the, of St. Francis to possibly look into having the child placed there? Um, I believe so. Uh, I know I've spoke to grandma and she even voiced concern to me her age. She doesn't know how long or how much she'll be able to do for Isabella with all her needs. Um, I also know we still need her proof of citizenship and everything before we can go ahead with that. Okay, let me ask you something. Um, as far as a proof of um, of citizenship, so y'all are wanting, I guess, what, a birth certificate for a paternal grandmother? Yes. Okay, but she does have a, a valid driver's license, correct? I believe so, yes. Okay, and um, and are you aware that with uh, that either you have to be a legal permanent resident or you have to, um, or be a U.S. citizen to have a driver's license here in Texas? Yes, ma'am. Okay. I'll pass the witness. Okay. Anybody else have anything further today? And and just so I know, Ms. Brooks, is this who Misty is living with at the time? It is. is okay. um, so mom's in that home also right now. Yes. And when we started it, dad was living there. He moved out and then Misty moved in, um, okay. which is a concern, but the main concern with the others, other residents also living in the home. Okay. All right. Thank you. <clears throat> All right, then, at this time, I'm going to find that there would be a continuing and ongoing danger to return the child home at this time. Uh, we will continue the department as temporary managing conservator and continue placement. Um, I find parents are in compliance with their service plans and are working hard towards reunification, and the department is assisting with that. And uh, Ms. Smith, just keep keep working away at this. Um, and, and Judge, may I... Judge, may I just ask Misty a couple questions just for your benefit, uh, for your future notes? Sure. All right, Misty, I know we spoke yesterday and you indicated what kind of efforts you were making to get your own uh, residence set up. Just explain to the judge what your goal is. My goal is to either get a house or an apartment. I'm looking for all bills paid mainly um, to make it easier on me. Um, but right now, I got an application. I got to find it in my email from uh, Borger Apartments over there. They're two thirty a month, but um, I got to pay the bills. But I mean, that's okay as long as I don't run the bills up. But yeah, that's my goal right now is to get a place to live, a stable home. Mm -hmm. And then and to you've uh, also you've also ahead. been in contact with Martha's Home here in Amarillo. Yes, they upped me on the list Monday because I told them that I was I was um in the, in the and the involvement of getting um, Isabella back. So, yes. And Isabella would be able to live there with you? Yes, sir. Yes. That's All right. correct. All right. All right. Um, also, you understand their concerns regarding your visits. You're willing to work with the ECI people and yes, basically, basically learn what you need to do to take care of her, correct? Correct. That is correct. Okay. Yes, okay. I want what's best for my daughters, both of them, Macy and Isabella. Yes, I want them happy and healthy forever. True story. Have you have you spent many months of your life taking care of an infant? Um, yeah, I did. I did very well with Macy when she was a baby. I, I was I was there. Um, I have a witness, Amanda Crook. Um, on that note. Um, but how long, how long did you have? All right. How long did you have Macy before she was placed outside your home? Um, three and a half months. Okay. Yeah. But when I had her, I was a good mom to her. I took I care of her and everything. Yeah. But you do understand. I mean, Isabella does have some special needs and you just need to 
be very aware of those. Right. Correct. All right. I have nothing further, Judge. All right, then um, our next hearing date is April 2nd of 2024 on a nine o'clock docket. So I'll see everybody back then and uh, just encourage parents to just keep up the good work. Okay, and what time will that be on April 2nd? April 2nd, and it'll be a nine o'clock docket, just like today. I started my docket at nine. Okay. Okay. Uh, the docket comes out about a week in advance, and it'll say exactly what time slot you'll be. Miss, okay. I'll let you know when we get closer to it. Okay. Okay. Good luck to you, ma'am. Thank you. We're here today All right. Thank you. Final. We are conducting this okay. through the Zoom program under a finding of good cause and consent and agreement of the parties. We are live streaming, and Ms. Taylor is making our record. All right, we'll take announcements. Daniel Trow for the Texas Department of Family and Protective Services. We're present, ready, Your Honor. Good morning, I also respond to Mother Lou Jennings, Your Honor. I've uh, made several attempts to contact her since my appointment, uh, sent out two letters um, and several phone calls, and I have not been able to contact her, Your Honor, nor she reached out to my office. But I'm ready. Brooks Barfield, attorney for Nicholas Lace, the father. Um, he was incarcerated. It's my understanding that he has since been released. Um, we have done searches in my office through the Texas Offender Search, Potter, Randall County Jails. Um, we don't have a contact number or address. He has not contacted my office. Um, therefore, on his behalf, I'd request a continuance. But I am personally ready. Stacey Zavala on behalf of Lily. All right. Um, <clears throat> Mr. Barfield, um, your motion for continuance is denied. Uh, we're going to go ahead and proceed today. Um, all right, Mr. Trout, how many witnesses do you have? Two, Your Honor. All right, then, Mr. Tretch, you may proceed and call your first witness. Call Mel Tucker, Your Honor. And you, the original investigator on this case, no longer works for the department. Is that correct? Yes, sir. And during investigations, does the department keep um, regular records in its course of business? Yes, we do. And are those records um, entries made at or around the time that the events occurred? Yes, sir. Are they made by a person with personal knowledge? Yes, sir. Do you have access to those records? Yes, sir. Are you considered a custodian of records for those? Yes, sir. <laughs> have you had an opportunity to view the records in this case? I have. Um, are the removal affidavit investigative reports, are they made parts of the record? Yes, sir. And are those filed with the court? Yes, sir. Um, have you reviewed those documents? Yes, sir. Can you tell me how did the department uh, become involved in this case? On uh, December 6, 2022, we uh, received a report regarding a uh, mom testing positive for methamphetamines and marijuana. Okay. And that's at the birth of the baby, Lily? Lily. And the mother was Lou Jennings. Okay. Um, and during the investigation, did the um, investigator at the time find out who the possible father was? Yes, Nick Lacey. And did the um, investigator, was she able to make contact with parents? Yes, she made contact with both parents and the baby at the hospital. <clears throat> Do you know when that was, approximately? December 7th, 2022. Um, did mother talk to the parents about um the positive drug screens yes uh mother denied any meth use since finding out that she was pregnant okay. um and then she turned around and said that she hit the pipe a few days prior to delivery she okay. also admitted to uh marijuana use throughout the pregnancy okay um did the parents state at the time where they were living um, the parents are, were homeless. Um, it was reported that they had given the hospital a 
false address of where they were living. Um, but at the time, they said that they were homeless and had been moving around. Okay. Um, did the was the worker or investigator able to see the baby at that time? Yes. And where was the baby? The baby was in the nursery at the hospital. Were there um, noted any issues of withdrawals or anything from the baby? The baby was uh, very hard to console uh, issues with feeding and sleeping. Okay. Um, were there any issues as far as noted in the file from the hospital as far as care for the child and the uh, parents' interactions with the child? So originally the baby was in the room with the parents. Uh, a nurse walked into the room and found both parents passed out in the bed. The baby was on the bed face, face down with its head hanging off the bed. Okay. And so at that point they put the baby in the nursery. And after that, were there orders for the baby to stay in the nursery and parents could visit in the nursery? Yes, by the Texas Tech uh, doctors. Okay. Um, and when the investigator spoke with dad, Nicholas Lacey, um, he stated that he lives with Lou, the mom? Yes. And that they were, um, he also stated that they were homeless back and forth couch surfing? Yes, sir. Um, <clears throat> did they understand um, the concerns with the baby and why the uh, department was looking into them? Yes, they voiced understanding and with the department's concerns. Okay. Did um, dad admit to prior methamphetamine use? Yes, sir. Um, he stated, though, that he had not used since he got out of prison in January. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. Um, at the time, did he state that he was willing to or wanted to go back into rehab? Yes, sir. Um, were the, did the parents visit the child much? According to uh, the reports, they had one visit with the child in the nursery, and that was... That was it. Or mom did. Okay. And so the department was asking for removal due to the positive drug screens and concerns for uh, no place for the baby to go. Yes, sir. <clears throat> and sorry, one second. And when was that uh, removal effective? December 8th, 2022. Um. Where was the child placed? In a foster placement. Did um, the investigator at the time work on trying to get back in touch with the parents once they left the hospital? Yes, several attempts were made at a, a home that had a condemned uh, posting on it. Um, they left the removal paperwork at the home. Um, it was when they went back for another visit, the paperwork had been taken, but they never did. We're unable to locate the parents. Okay. Um, and do you know approximately how many times they tried to get in touch with the parents after the removal? Uh, several times. I can't give a definitive number. Um, <clears throat> before the adversary hearing in St. Francis took over the case, did was the investigator able to get up with the parents at, after that point? No. Okay. Um, did, were they able to get in touch with um, maternal grandmother? Yes, they did talk with the maternal grandmother. Um, she knew that her, she was not aware of her daughter's use because her daughter pretty much stayed away and didn't contact her. So she had no locating or contact information for her. Okay. And she was she was not aware at the time of uh, mom's drug use? No. Okay. Um, what about anybody on the paternal side of the family? Um, she was able to contact patern or was contacted by the paternal grandmother um, on... Doo -doo. 
Oh, on December 13th, she was contacted by the paternal grandmother. Um, and did paternal grandmother at the time know where mom and dad were? Uh, no, that they were uh, going from place to place. Um, that And she said that they had been staying in an abandoned home, but doesn't wasn't sure where it was located. And did paternal grandmother, did she have knowledge of her son's drug use? Yes. And she was aware of Miss um, Jennings also, Lou Jennings? Yeah, she, uh, she reported that they had been using for two years, that they'd been together. Um, did the, um, now as far as the baby, they sent off uh, cord blood, is that correct? Yes, sir. And did those come back positive? Yes, they were positive for the methamphetamines, marijuana, and then mother's prescribed gabapentin. Okay. And so due to these factors, you believe it was in the best interest of the baby to remove at that time? Yes, sir. And um, do you, are you aware of how the baby was doing after removal? No. Okay. But baby... Well, I mean, she was, she was doing... Finding the placement is the, from the record, but that's all I know. And as, as we just stated, the um, department did feel it was in the best interest of the child for removal. Yes, sir. I'll pass witness here. Okay, uh, Mr. Morales. Uh, Ms. Tucker, during your review of the investigative notes, at any point, um, did, does it indicate that the department let Ms. Jennings know whether or not she added a, a, a quarter point and if um, she was aware of who that attorney was. All right, hang on a minute. Ms. Taylor, were you able to get all that? Okay. Uh, I just know after discharge, they were unable to, uh, the investigator was un unable to locate the parents. So I don't think at any uh, point they filled out the affidavit for a court appointed that I saw in the report. Okay, thank you. No, uh, pass witness, Your Honor. All right, Mr. Barfield. No questions, Your Honor. All right, Ms. Savala. No questions, Your Honor. Okay, Mr. Trout, anything further of this witness? Nothing further, Ms. Tucker. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So before she hits the button, is Ms. Tucker free to go? I have no objection. No objection. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Call Christina Hunter, Your Honor. And how are you familiar with that case? I've been the primary worker on this case um, since removal. Okay. Um, when you re first received the case, um, what is your primary steps? I'm sorry, say that one more time. What, what are your beginning steps when you first receive a case? Um, we review the removal affidavit, um, look at the contact notes that have been entered. Um, we do history checks, criminal as well as DFPS like history checks as well. Um, we try to make contact with the parents, try to meet with them. Uh, we establish a family plan of service and try to get them started with services. It's kind of the basis. Um, in this case, were you able to get in touch with the parents? Um, I was, yes. At, at the beginning of the case? Um, I was able to um, actually make um, a face-to-face -face contact with them on January the 10th. Okay. And you mentioned a while ago um, family plans of service. Can you tell me what those are? Um, the family plan of service is a plan that is developed to help mitigate the, reason, uh, the reasons for removal. Okay. And what type of... Um, services do those typically entail? Um, they're all individually based, um, depending upon the circumstances of the case. But as far as this one is concerned, um, drugs were a major part of it, as well as homelessness. Um, and so it was to helping them to um, get clean and sober, maintain sobriety, as well as helping them seek drug treatment, um, as well as employment, housing, um, to be able to build stability. Okay. And did you generate a plan like that? I did, yes. And did you were you able to go over that plan with the parents? I was. And did both of the parents sign those plans? Yes. And this plan was uh, individually tailored, as you said, to these parents and the issues at the case. 
Yes. Um, was that plan filed with the court? Yes, it was. Did you receive what I sent out, exhibit number uh, one? Yes. And can you tell me what that is? It is the family plan, the original family plan of service that was developed for them that they both signed on January the 10th. Okay. And this was filed with the court on January 31st of 2023? I believe so, yes. And this is the plan that both parents signed? Yes. On the 10th? On the 10th? Okay. Yes. Judge, I'd ask to admit exhibit number one, which is a family plan of service that Ms. Hunter just testified to. No objection. No objection. No objection. All right. Uh, Petitioner's exhibit one will be admitted. Thank you, Honor. Um, <clears throat> Ms. Hunter, were these, after this family plan was filed with the court, is it made in order of the court? Yes. And did the parents, have the parents worked on these uh, service plans? No, unfortunately. Has, we'll, we'll talk about mom first real quick. Um, the Ms. Jennings, has she started any of her services? No. Has she done any drug screening for you? No. Has she participated in an OSAR? No. Has she done a, a rational behaviors in here? Has she done that? No. Has she done individual counseling? No. Um, did she do her parenting classes? No. Um, did she stay in contact with you? No. Does she have stable housing that you know of? No. Um, and as far as all those services we just talked about on those, has she signed up or began any of these? No. And so, as you mentioned, she hasn't began them, so it's safe to say she has definitely has not completed anything. That is correct. Um, after this, after you went over the service plans with her and she signed these, did you, when was your next contact with mom? I had actually um, scheduled a follow-up contact with her on February the 23rd. Um, she did confirm that we were going to be meeting. However, she did not show. Um, I was not able to reestablish like communication and face-to-face -face contact with her until I believe October. Okay. And we were, um, during that time, we weren't able to find her either. And so we, um, effective service through publication, is that correct? Yes. But then, and as you said, uh, reestablished with her in October and we were able to get her personally served in October, correct? Yes. But mom, due to the fact she signed service plans and you had met with her originally, she knew about this case. Yes, she was provided a copy of it as well as with all the information that was necessary to make contacts with her providers. Um, I made her aware that we were able to assist the transportation. Um, she had every means available to be able to help her get started with these services. Um, has mom had any business with the child? No. Um, has she contacted you asking about visitations or how the baby is doing or any of that? She's asked me for pictures um, whenever I have been able to see her face to face, um, but she's not asked to see her now. And did she actually state that she sees pictures through family? Yes. Um, throughout the life of this case, since you've had it, how many times have you had face to face contact with mom? Three. Okay. And were most of those so at the very beginning and here toward the end? Yes. But nothing in the middle? No. Um, how often do you try to contact the parents during your cases? I try to, I have to make contact with them every month, but I have to try to make, find them one way or another, at least three attempts every single month if I'm not able to make contact with them. Okay. So this case is right around 12 months. Um, so in those 12 months, you've had the case since January, I believe, end of December, January? Um, I was assigned it at the end of uh, December end of, of December. last year. Um, so we'll just say in 11 months, um, you tried contacting with them at least with mom at least three times a month. Yes. And you've actually made contact personally face to face three times. Yes. Okay. Um, we'll move over to dad real quick. Um, dad was personally served back in February of this case. Is that correct? Yes. And he also signed the service plan. Yes. And was aware that they were made a court order. Yes. Did dad work on rational behavior? No. Parenting classes? No. Did he have stable living? No. Um, do you know whether he had a stable job throughout or income throughout the life of this case? No. Um, OSAR? No. Did he do any drug screening? He's done one screen for us, um, and that was uh, mid-October. Okay, so just here recently? Yes. Um, 
And were you able to, I'm assuming you made the same amount of attempts for dad as you did for mom. Yes. Um, and how often were you able to contact dad throughout the life of this case? Um, I was able to have the first initial face-to-face -face contact with him as well in January. Um, and then nothing until I was able to reestablish with him in, in September, whenever he was in jail. Okay. So you were able to track him down. He was incarcerated. Yes. And did he tell you what his plan was when he got out of jail? He had told me his plan was to go to face city mission to attend rehab. Unfortunately, he did not follow through with that. Uh, when was he released from jail? I believe October the 14th. Okay. So you, and you saw him in September in jail? I saw him in September and in October. Okay. Was he, was he in jail to your knowledge for a month, two months? Do you know how long he was in? There? He was incarcerated uh, starting mid um, July, I believe. Okay. okay. Um, since he has gotten out, has he reached out to you? No. And you said that he did not go to rehab like he said he was planning on. That is correct. Do you know where he is currently? Um, he is uh, currently staying with Lou. Okay. Um, when was the last time you saw him? Uh, I ran into him on the streets actually by accident. Um, I believe it was beginning of November. Okay. Um, and did he state, did he state at that time that he was with Lou? Um, no, uh, he was actually on his way to work at that point. Um, and he told me he was already running an hour behind and I said, okay, I said, go ahead and go to work. I'll try to catch up with you later. Um, and so that was the end of the conversation. Have you been able to catch up with him since then? I have not, unfortunately. And did he say where he was working? Um, he was working at the Dairy Queen off of uh, I-40 in Western. Okay. Did he, um, during that short conversation, did he ask how the child was? No. Did he ask to have a visitation set up or to see the child? No. And this child's been in care for um, over six months, correct? Almost a year now. A year. And St. Francis Department have given provided resources for the parents to reunite with the child. Is that correct? Yes. And one of those, one of the main ways is through the uh, family plans of service, correct? Yes. And neither parent has utilized any of those services. That is correct. Have not set them up, have not attempted any of them. No. Um, the, you said that Mr. Lacey drug screened for you? He did, yes. And were those results concerning to you? Yes, they were. Okay. Um, now, at one of the last hearings, um, dad wanted paternity testing. Is that correct? Yes. And we ended up not doing that due to AG having a um, acknowledgement of paternity that was signed by dad. Is that correct? Yes. Judge, I would ask to admit exhibit number three, which is a copy of the acknowledgement of paternity that was signed by Lou Jennings and Nicholas Lacey on the date of birth. No objection. No objection. No objection. Sister's exhibit three will be admitted. And so your understanding of that, Ms. Hunter, is that uh, Mr. Lacey is acknowledging that he is a, a biological father of the child, correct? Yes, sir. Um, is the department today in this hearing asking the court to terminate the parental rights of Lou Ann Jennings and terminate the parental rights of Nicholas Lacey as to the child? Yes, sir. And you believe that's in the best interest of the child? Yes, sir. And is the um, reasons for that uh, constructive abandonment? They have not seen the child uh, since out of the hospital. Yes, sir. Have not reached out to ask for that. Have not uh, availed themselves of the services to reunite with their child. Yes, sir. Um, to the grounds of the drug usage from the beginning of the case and the child being born positive for drugs. Yes, sir. Um, and the failure to work services. Yes, sir. Um, how is the child doing? She's doing amazing. Where is she? She's currently in a foster home. Is this a potential long-term placement for yes. her? Are they, they are adoptive, uh, adoption motivated? They are. Um, have they started the process or where are they in that process? Um, they have not started the process for adoption as of yet. Um, the situation in the home is a little bit more complicated as there is another child that they're also looking to adopt at the same time as Lily, if it becomes possible. Okay. So they are waiting on this stage to get through before they can kind of see where they're going with that. But they are... Um, their long-term plan is to adopt Lily. Yes. Um, does Lily have any um, special medical needs or anything that came from being born positive? Um, she was having withdrawals initially, um, but the withdrawal symptoms have since subsided. Um, she's healthy, growing, thriving. She's she's a tiny little monster. Let's put it that way. <laughs> um, 
And you do, again, believe that termination of parental rights of the parents as to the child is in that be- child's best interest and it will allow them to try to move forward with adoption. I do. I'll pass the witness, y'all. Uh, Ms. Morales. Um, yes, Ms. Hunter, when you spoke with um, the father and he indicated that he was with Ms. Jennings, um, did, were you able to let him know or Ms. Jennings at any point that she had an court appointed attorney? I was, yes. Okay. Did, were you able to make either one of them aware that, that of my name? Yes, um, I provided Ms. Jennings your contact information, your address, your email, your phone number, whenever I met with her um, on December the 17th um, is whenever I had provided it to you. And I also had sent your office the address to where I was able to locate her as well. I'll pass the witness, Your Honor. Yes, um, so Ms. Hunter, what... What did uh, Nicholas do to mitigate the reasons of removal during this case? Unfortunately, nothing. Okay. And the last contact you had with him was approximately um, a month ago, uh, on just a random meeting on the street. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Okay. At, at, at that time, he recognized you and knew you were his caseworker, and, but didn't ask anything about the case. Did I hear your testimony correctly? That is correct. Okay. So, so right now, do you would you have any contact information for him? Other than just where I've been able to find Lou, unfortunately, no. Would you say he has a stable home environment based on the fact that he's residing with Lou? Um, stable. I'm not certain on that, to be honest with you, but I know he does have a roof over his head at the moment. Okay, and and to your knowledge, he was working at Dairy Queen. Yes, I was not able to verify though that he's had continued employment there since that meeting though. Do you know if he had any type of transportation? Uh, he was riding a bicycle when I met when I saw him. Okay. Um, do you feel that it would be in the, in the Lily's best in, best interest uh, for him to remain as a possessory conservator in this case? I do not. And is that based upon the fact that he failed to work services? Um. Yes. Are there any other reasons uh, that you can think of that? Uh, he might be able to, at this point to do anything to change your mind. Unfortunately, at this point, um, for as many opportunities has been presented to both him and Lou, um, I don't believe so. It would be in the best interest of Lily to to do that to her. Now, he was incarcerated for a, a period of time during this case. Is that correct? Yes. And uh, for do you know what he was incarcerated for? Um, I believe he was incarcerated for a burglary charge, and I can't remember the other one, to be honest with you. And do you happen to know what the disposition of those charges were? Um, I know one of them, he is currently on uh, probation for, I believe. Um, I'm not certain on the other. Okay. All right. I'll pass the witness. Um, Mr. Lacey was not incarcerated throughout this entire case, correct? That is correct. Um, I believe you testified before that, that he was incarcerated beginning in May sometime? In July. Uh, okay, in July. Um, and you had met with him in January? I met with him in January, and then I had reestablished communication with him in September. Okay. And um, when you met with him in jail, um, did you provide him all of your contact information so he could keep in contact when he got out? I did. Um, and he didn't reach out to you? Unfortunately, no. Um, Lily has been in the same home since she was three days old? Yes. And as today's her birthday, we're three days short of a year? Yes, ma'am. And um, there were originally some concerns and she had to be checked out by a cardiologist, but that's all resolved, right? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And placement has has monitored all of her medical needs and has done everything that, that she needed uh, medically. Yes, ma'am. Is, is she bonded to placement? She's very bonded. Is she thriving in placement? Yes, ma'am, she is. And I think I heard that maybe in the last few days, she's now walking in placement. Yes, ma'am. She started walking about a couple weeks ago. All right. Um, I passed the witness. Okay, Mr. Trout, any other questions for Ms. Hunter? A couple of real quick things, Your Honor. Um, <clears throat> Ms. Hunter, you when you reestablished communication with um, Nicholas Lacey when he was in jail, did you provide him another copy of um, his service plans? I did. Did did he actually sign a copy of those? He did, yes. 
And when you were established with um, mom, did you go over service plans with her again? I did. And did she sign those? Yes, sir. Do you have exhibit number two? Yes, sir. And what is that? Uh, that's the family plan of service that was signed by Lou um, in October. Your Honor, I'd ask to admit exhibit number two also that is um, shows that Lou and Jenny's also signed another copy of the service plans on October 16th of 2023. No objection. Objection. No objection. Okay. Did you get all that, Ms. Taylor? Okay. All right. Um, all right. Petitioner's exhibit two will be admitted. Thank you, Your Honor. And Ms. Hunter, after you went over, talked to Mr. Lacey in jail and Lou Jennings um, and went over their service plans, again, neither one of them reached back out to you. Um, that is correct. Um, Mr. Lacey did not reestablish communication with me after he got out of the jail. Um, and the only way I've been able to stay in contact with Ms. Jennings is showing up at the residence she's been residing at. Thank you, ma'am. Nothing further, Your Honor. All right. Anybody have any other questions for Ms. Hunter? No, Your Honor. No, Your Honor. Okay. Mr. Trapp, this is apartment rest. Apartment rest, Your Honor. All right. Mr. Morales, you've indicated no witnesses. Any change to that? No, Your Honor. No witnesses. I'd rest. Okay. And same, Mr. Barfield. Rest and close, Your Honor. All right. Ms. Zavala. I rest, Your Honor. Okay. Do you have a recommendation to make to the court today? I do. I do believe that it's in Lily's best interest that the parental rights be terminated for both mother and father at this time. All right. Thank you. All right. This time I do find by clear and convincing evidence that it is in the best interest of the child to terminate the parental rights between the child and her mother, Lou Jennings, based on Texas Family Code Section 161-001, subsection B1. The DEO and R grounds, in the best interest under Texas Family Code 161001, subsection B2. Um, I will adjudicate uh, Nicholas Lacey as the father of the child to uh, his acknowledgement of paternity uh, that was signed and is in evidence and establish the parent child relationship between the two of them. I find by clear and convincing evidence it's in the best interest of the child to terminate the parental rights between the child and her father, Nicholas Lacey based on Texas Family Code Section 161001, subsection B1, the DE in and O grounds, and the best interest under 161001B2. At this time, I'll dismiss all court-appointed attorneys from the case after the de novo and appellate timeframes expire, with the exception of Ms. Zavala, who will remain as the child's attorney and guardian ad litem. Counsel, uh, as always, um, if you're instructed to file an appeal, please wait to do that until the order has been signed and adopted by the referring court. And be mindful that your de novo time frame does begin to run since I've rendered an open court. Okay. Can you hear us? Yes, ma'am, we can hear you. Okay. Judge Lindsay? Yes, give me just a minute. Here you go. All right, Mr. Barfield. I'll move you We're to today set you. on our final in both cases. We are conducting this through Zoom under a finding of good cause and consent of the parties. Uh, we are live streaming and Ms. Taylor is making our record. All right. Um, we'll go ahead and take announcements. Daniel Trial for the Texas Department of Family and Protective Services. We are present and ready, Your Honor, and we will have some announcements before we get going on the hearing. Brooks Barfield, attorney for Lindsay Hill. She's present and we are both ready. Jeff Hill, on behalf of Keaton Hensley, he's present. We're ready. T.D. Hammonds, representing Jonathan Archer, the father of Juniper. We're ready to proceed, Judge, if you have brought him in from the jail. He is present and I've confirmed that he can hear us. Okay. Stacey Zavala, on behalf of the girls, here and ready. Okay. All right, thank you all. All right, and then Mr. Trout, we have anything worked out? Yes, ma'am, Your Honor. Um, so 
On, I'll start with um, on the Hensley case. Um, the parties have agreed. Um, there's a prior order for a joint managing conservatorship where mom was primary. Um, we have agreed to keep them as joint managing. However, Keaton Hensley will now be the primary caregiver um, with the ability to establish residency. Um, we've also agreed to um, child support, mom to pay child support to dad at minimum wage, um, medical support at $25 per kid a month. Um, we're working out a the step up, which is some of the meetings we've had today is working out some kinks on the step up visitation plans um, for mom. So it will be a two, three step process of um, working up to a standardized visitation plan. And we, we don't have that part work completely out. We just had some logistic issues due to the nature of the case and where the kids are placed and keeping sibling visits and that sort of stuff together so that we were working on that part of it right now. Uh, but I think we've got, for the most part, it laid out. We just got to get a few kinks worked out on it. Okay. Um, so y'all need some more time to get, make sure everybody's on the same page before, I mean, I don't know whether I can take an agreement unless we've got it or really agreed to. Yes, ma'am. Your Honor, from my standpoint, I think I, I mean, we're in complete agreement. I think all, what we're working on is more of a logistics type, not necessarily the agreement per se, but we're just working out the, the logistics in, in locations uh, of, of organizing the visits. And uh, I've spoken with my client. Um, it's just a matter we have a number of moving parts, but we have an agreement as to the stair step from, from my client. Um, it's just a matter of, of exactly what day the visit might take place or whether it be family support services. Also, my client, uh, I've asked her to provide some names of some individuals who could supervise uh, that that have no relation to the case or any reasons for anyone to have any concern necessarily. So that's all we're trying to work out. Okay. Well, I'm going to come back to that. Do, do y'all then, are you going to need some more time before we actually just, you know, say this is a done deal? I, Judge, I'm hoping to have these things. I mean, I'm hoping to have this worked out within the next two days and given out to everybody and the order is done. Um, like I said, I need I, one of my conversations with the up churches just then was kind of a, about this and uh, with the attorney prior to it on, um, like I said, the okay. supervising where it's going to take place. I mean, as far as a, you know, agreement on the step up plan and um, what the parties are willing to do. I think we are we're set on all of that. It's just the the times and places is what we're looking at. All right. Well, I guess then. I mean, I'll, <clears throat> I can take this the agreement, and then I suppose if something completely falls apart, then I guess we reopen and take it up. Yeah, and, and I really don't think, I, I really don't think it's going to fall apart. I, mean, I, don't, I don't see anything falling apart. I mean, it's really, Judge, it's kind of like where the party's, you know, it's kind of like one of those deals. Do we meet at the McDonald's or the gas station? Is it going to be a Saturday or Sunday? It's kind of where we're at. Um, and it's really the only issue is, and I understand what 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 the court's saying is really the only issue is 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 uh, that type of logistic stuff that we're dealing with. Um, we do have a period in both step ups for both cases for the supervised, and I think after the supervised uh, is is handled, I think it gets a lot simpler. But but yeah, I, I think that's a good idea from the court is is let's go ahead and and, and move forward, and then if for some reason uh we just can't figure something out then we could do that that we're fine with that 
All right. So, Mr. Barfield, then you're telling me that that's you and your client's agreement. That is correct. Okay. And Mr. Hill? Yes, Your Honor. Okay. And then, Ms. Zavala, do you believe that with respect to the Hensley children, this is in their best interest? I do, Your Honor. Okay. All right. Casa, have any uh, concerns about this? I can't hear you. Let me just ask you this. Are you in agreement with this? Okay. All right. She's nodding her head affirmatively, and I think she said yes. All right. Uh, okay. Then where are we with Miss Juniper? So, Your Honor, on Juniper's case, um, what the parties have agreed to is the parties that are in agreement on this part is um, the up churches who are placement for Juniper right now uh, and kinship home uh, would be named permanent managing conservator. Mom would be named possessory. Um, we're also working same um, step up plan as far as visitations with mom. Um, and that's kind of where the logistics was coming in is making sure that kiddos were keeping uh, sibling visits as they are and working out those days. Uh, but um, mom would pay $50 a month in medical um, on Juniper, no child support at this time, uh, just the medical support and department would be out at that point as far as mom's concerned. Um, as, as to dad, we'll need a hearing today on that part on uh, Mr. Archer. Um, but that is the agreement with mom. Yeah, Judge, I can tell you in regards to Jonathan Archer, it's my understanding the department plans to proceed with uh, termination of his parental rights. He does not agree with that. I can tell the court in light of the criminal matters that are pending, I've advised Mr. Archer to invoke his Fifth Amendment right to remain silent. I anticipate he will do that. So you will have no testimony from us, but uh, it will consist of the department proving up an allegation uh, as far as termination goes. All right. Um, then um, I would certainly, uh, in the Hensley, let's back up real quick. In the Hensley case, then, obviously, then the department will be dismissed as well. Correct? Yes, ma'am. And all, and of course, all court appointed attorneys, same in, and I understand that's mom's agreement in the Archer case, but, um, okay, so, um, Mr. Hill, um, I would say then, um, on the Hensley case, then I will approve the agreement as announced. And I'll sign the order when that's presented. Mr. Hill, I think then at this time, you and your client can certainly be excused um, as all we're going to do is take up issues in the Archer case. So uh, thank you all for uh, your patience today. And, and Mr. Hensley, uh, best of luck. Hope everything continues to go well. So, uh, you all can be excused. Then, um, Mr. Trout, if you want to call your first witness in the Archer case. Yes, Your Honor. Um, um, oh. I apologize. Before we get started, um, due to some of the nature of what I anticipate we might hear, I would like to request to preserve the, the children's privacy that we go off of YouTube, if at all possible. No objection. No objection to that, Judge. I would second that motion. All right. There being no objection, and the uh, court is obviously aware of uh, what this testimony may involve. So um, 
I'm going to go ahead and find it's in the best interest of uh, the child uh, to protect the privacy and confidentiality of these things on behalf of the child. And I'm going to close the courtroom.